Good morning, everyone, all the kingdom citizens of the kingdom of God. Uh, welcome to the kingdom of God class. Uh, we began studying chapter um, eight um, last week, not last week, week before last. Okay, we, <laughs> we started studying chapter eight week before last. Last week was a holiday. Uh, so we'll continue with chapter eight. Can uh, one, of, one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Thank you, Heavenly Father. Today, this morning, we come uh, un under your name and we pray, Lord Jesus, give us uh, your wisdom and knowledge, Lord Jesus, as we are going to uh, learn about your kingdom, Lord Jesus, make us a kingdom uh, thinking and uh, Lord Jesus, use us for your glory, Lord Jesus. Every things, uh, sleepiness and all tiredness, you leave it, Lord Jesus, and and uh, give us refresh, refresh us and give us understanding and knowledge. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Vimal. So, um, week before last, we started studying Chapter Eight, Kingdom Authority. We said when Jesus introduced the kingdom of God. What did he do? How did he introduce the kingdom of God? With power. Yes. How did he introduce the kingdom of God? He not only taught and preached about the kingdom, but also he did it with demonstration of power, authority, and dominion. Okay. Uh, he went around healing the sick, raising the dead, uh, casting out demons. Okay, and that is how he demonstrated the kingdom of um, God. And Jesus also uh, told his disciples, you know, he also gave them the power and the authority. And he told his disciples to do, do the same thing. Okay, so Jesus intends not only his disciples to do the same thing, but also all who believe in him to do the same thing in their time, in their generation. So Jesus also intends that we also use kingdom power, kingdom authority, kingdom dominion uh, to not only preach and teach about the kingdom of God, but also demonstrate it by signs, miracles, and uh, wonders. Okay? So, you know, we can say that, hey, Jesus did it. It's okay. The 12 apostles did it. It's okay. Uh, and it's also okay with the early church when they did it. But who am I? Okay? So who, who are we? Who are we? Who are we? K kingdom heirs citizens? And yes. of, heirs and co-heirs of the kingdom of God. Heirs and co-heirs of the kingdom of God. Yes, we are a heir of God and joint heir with Jesus Christ. Okay. And we uh, we looked at this in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Uh, in the beginning, when we started studying this book, uh, this publication, we said that, you know, um, that Jesus had prepared his kingdom even before the foundations of the world, right? And um, he wanted it to be inherited by his people. He initiated, he wanted the kingdom of God to be established here on earth, but his intent was that his kingdom would be where, you know, his people would inherit it. That means we would be heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ in that kingdom okay so today as a child of god uh, look at what romans chapter 8 verses 16 and 17 says romans chapter 8 verses 16 and 17 can somebody read that please romans 8 16 and 17 anyone like to read that roman 8 16 and 17. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then as as of God and joint as with Christ. If needed, indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together. Amen. So here says God has sent His Spirit, and where is the Spirit in our hearts? And the Holy Spirit testifies to us that we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Okay, so kingdom authority is vested in me. I'm a heir of 
God, each one of us, kingdom authority is vested in us. We are ahead of God. The, the authority of God is flowing through each one of us. The authority of the king of this kingdom is flowing through each one of us. And as inheritors or heirs of this kingdom, his authority is in us. Okay. Let me give you an example. Now, when you see a policeman standing on the road, when he raises his hand, what happens? When he raises his hand, traffic is going, but he raises his hand like this, what happens? The traffic stops, right? So he has, why does he, when he raises his hand, why does the traffic stop? Because the government has given him that authority, right? Now, if suppose a, 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 a running car or a running bus, he comes in between, in the middle of that, in the front of it, sorry. He comes in the front of it, what happens? The car can run over him or the bus can run over him. He has no natural ability to stop that car, right? But when he's wearing his uniform and he raises his hand up, the traffic has to stop, okay? So because he's been vested by authority from the government. So also in the spiritual realm, okay? We don't think too highly of ourselves we always think we are very small in the kingdom of God. We are nothing. We don't have any power and authority. You know, we don't have a big name. But we need to know that there is kingdom authority vested in each one of us. We might not be famous. We might not be popular. People might not think very highly of us. But each one of us have kingdom west authority vested in us as a heir of God, joint heirs of Jesus Christ. And it's time for us to raise our hands. What do I mean time to raise our hands? It's time to raise our hands in the sense when, uh, when um, Satan is doing any work in our lives, in our family, in our church, in our, um, uh, in our community, it's time to stop him because we have the kingdom authority. Amen? Amen? Okay? So you can uh, be like the policeman who uses his authority or you can be like some policemen who are just sitting on the road and there's a traffic violation. They don't care. They don't bother. They just turn around and look the other side, right? In some of the cities, policemen don't care at all. You do whatever you want. You go however you want. They really don't uh, 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 care. They don't bother. Okay. And even if something happens, they pretend like nothing happens. They don't want to go and, you know, spoil their mind or head and put their uh, head into their uh, matters. So what kind of policeman do you want to be? Do you want to be a policeman who just turns away, pretends that nothing has happened, or you want to have the, be like that policeman who exercises his authority, okay? So you have kingdom authority vested in you. And it's time that as a church, we raise up, rise up, and do what we are called to do by God. The church is very complacent. They think, okay, this is not, this, hap this social evils are happening in our city. There's nothing we can do about it. We better keep quiet, right? Or there's something wrong happening in the church. None of us want to raise our voice and speak against it or speak out and bring about some remedy. We turn our eyes away, said, why should we interfere? Just go to church and worship and come. But that is not the attitude that we, uh, God wants us to have when we are looking at social evils, when we're looking at things that are happening in our lives, in our family. We cannot just say, okay, this is how it is. I need to live like this. Just, you know, go on like this is happening in my marriage, this is happening in my family, these problems are there. Can't do anything. You know, let's scope. Let's just go. Let's just live life as it comes. Okay? But God has called us. Okay? And it's time that we get up and raise our hands and stop what the devil is doing. Why? Because God has vested authority in our lives. Why did God vest? or put authority in our lives so that we can bring his kingdom here into this world, okay? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. How do you do that? How can you bind what is bound in heaven? How can you release on earth what is released in heaven? By using your kingdom authority, right? So the reason you and I have authority is because of our position. What is our position? Look at what Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 to 6 says. What does Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6 say? Can I read, sister? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Ephesians uh, 2, 4, 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with, 
with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. So where are we seated? Where are we seated? In heavenly the right, places. The right hand of the Father in the heavenly places. What does that mean? It's not physically we are seated. Spiritually, that's our identification. And what does that mean? It shows us the place of authority. Okay. So uh, we as believers are seated in a position of higher authority at the right hand of the Father. It's the highest place of authority that anyone can get. Right? Some of us are fighting for authority on this earth. We want position, we want power, we want fame, we want name. And God is saying, hey, why are you just crazy after running after all of this position, power, fame and name? I've already given you the highest authority anyone can get on planet earth. And what is, where is your authority? Where are you seated? What is your position? The right hand of the father. Do you want anything more than that? Do you want any other position? You want any other fame or name? So when Satan is saying, hey, you have, you're nobody, you have no name, no fame. You know, you're working here in this church, you're working here in this organization, you're working so hard, nobody's recognizing you. You tell the devil, hey, you know my position, I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. We need to always be reminding ourselves of these truths because if we don't remind ourselves of these truths, if we don't live in these truths and walk in these truths, the enemy can easily you know, mislead us. Like in the garden, right? Adam and Eve. He said, hey, if you eat from this fruit, you will become like God. But Adam and Eve, so sad, they did not know their identity. How did God create them? His in image, in his own likeness. They were already like God. But look at how the devil, you know, uh, uh, tempted them and said, hey, you lack something. You know, there is something less in you. But there was nothing less in them. And that is what he does for each one of us. So don't get caught up in this whole rat race of fame, name, position. I am great. I'm supposed to be acknowledged. You know, I did so much of work. Nobody is giving me the recognition. I don't have a reverend. I don't have apostle so-and-so. I'm not prophet so-and-so. No, so I won't serve in the church. No, that is all, you know, that is all earthly. But we've already been seated at the right hand of the Father when you are born again. That is your position. You, there is no other better seat that God can give you, right? That is the best seat that he has given you. And from there, what, what is your position? Everything is underneath your feet. Every demonic work, every demonic spirit, everything is under your feet. You remember what Paul says in Romans chapter 16, verse 20? The God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. Amen? So God has vested us with so much kingdom authority in your life and my life. It's time we rise up and exercise that God-given authority. Now, the challenge we face is that, you know, we operate in two worlds, right? We are operating in the natural world and also the, the spiritual world, okay? So anytime we face problems in this natural world, how do we face the problems? We usually face it with our natural mindset or the way, you know, people in this world do things, okay? Yes, sometimes we need to address natural things in the natural way, but everything in the natural is subject to the uh, spiritual, amen? Everything in our natural world is subject or is under the authority of the spiritual realm. So everything in the natural can be changed from the spiritual, your problem can be changed. Your sickness can be healed. The demonic works can be stopped if you will come through the spiritual into the natural. Amen? Amen? So even as we deal with things in the natural world, we need to deal it from the spiritual realm. Okay? So everything that in the natural can be changed uh, through the spiritual. But the challenge for us is to rise above that to you know, uh, go beyond our reasoning. Sometimes when we face problems, we're always constantly thinking in our natural minds, but we must need to tell ourselves, hey, the natural world is subject to the spiritual. Let me look, let me see what the Holy Spirit is telling me and guiding me to do. So 
it's a choice that you are going to make how you're going to handle it you're going to handle things to the natural or you're going to handle things to the spiritual when you handle things to the spiritual it has far better consequences uh, good effects uh, good outcomes and also it will help you in a greater way are you all able to understand what i'm saying yes so why what do we have authority over okay is we said that god has vested us with kingdom authority dominion and power what do we have authority over what are the realms of authority we have okay uh, uh just going back to the example i gave you remember the policeman example i gave you now the policeman the same policeman on the street the traffic policeman if he comes to your house and tells you hey this is what you should do this is how you should uh you know place the furniture in your house uh this is what you should be, be cooking today what would you do what would you tell the policeman you have no authority to do that in my house hey you are wearing a traffic police uniform your authority is jurisdiction is only on the streets the traffic okay not on the road on the streets it's not in my house okay so when he steps out of that realm he does not function with that authority so also it is with you and me we need to understand our realm of authority because in that realm we see the fruit of the kingdom authority flowing in and through our lives so when we use kingdom authority in the right place in the right realm we can see its fruits so where is the realm of authority that we have the first thing is we need to understand that we have authority over every demonic work everything that satan is doing in your life in your in the community in your workplace in your church um in the city in the nation you know you have authority over okay so you have authority over every demonic work okay so for example if your neighbor or if your daughter or your child or your spouse or somebody in your family comes and tells you hey i'm having these terrible nightmares dreams in my uh, terrible dreams okay nightmares they have to me you know the dreams are so disturbing i can see snakes i can see all these bad evil things all of these things and what do you do you say hey look you know i have kingdom authority in me the true and living god has placed kingdom authority in me can i pray for you can i because he has given me the authority to stop every demonic work that is affecting you so if you as a believer will do that and they are ready for you to pray anyone will be ready because they want to come out of this nightmare out of this problem and you use your authority to minister to that person you know imagine he or she is going through that suffering for such a long time you use your authority you bring about healing and deliverance and what is going to happen that person is going to feel deliverance that person is going to experience healing and he is going or he or she is going to follow jesus okay so what sometimes will take thousand sermons to convince that person that jesus christ is a true and living god a single prayer of belief and faith by you you know and using your authority bringing about healing and deliverance can change that situation can even change the eternal dis- destiny of that individual okay so you and i have kingdom authority over every demonic work don't think the devil is troubling you and you just live in fear you run from you know pastor to pastor prophet to prophet asking them to pray over you you have kingdom authority you just bind the works of the enemy what else do we have authority over we have authority over every natural element circumstances every situation that concerns us that concerns your world things that are affecting you whether it's your job your career your family um you know whatever you can dom- you can dominate those situations by using kingdom authority okay so uh, if anything is affecting your personal life stand up bold strong speak to those uh situations circumstances use the name of jesus use the promises in god's word and use the authority kingdom authority that you are given to, given okay so if you're facing a storm right um what do you do like jesus what did he do he rose up and he spoke to that storm he said peace be still 
Okay. What Jesus did not do is he did not go and pray to the father and say, father, if it's your will, the storm is disturbing us. This rain is disturbing us. Please, you know, these, this, these disciples is disturbing me when I'm sleeping peacefully. Please, Jesus, do something. He did not do that, right? What did he do? He just goes and rebukes the storm. He uses his authority. And that is what we need to do uh, when we go through difficult situations and circumstances. We speak to that and exercise your God-given authority. Amen? 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 So one area you don't have authority over is other people's will. You can't control other people's will. Okay? You can't control them as robots or machines and don't try to press switches in their life to say, hey, do this, don't do this, don't do that. That is witchcraft, right? Uh, and that's a realm of authority that we do not exercise. We don't control other people's will we cannot exercise our authority over other people's will okay but what we can do is the realm that god has given us we exercise our authority we step in we speak in faith we declare god's promises we declare god's word till we see whatever is your challenges your situations whatever demonic works is nullified because you have kingdom authority okay yes can you use a mic please Can we pray for a politician that changed their mind? Sometimes they are doing some wrong things. So can we pray like that to change their mind? To yes. Be changed? Why not? You use your kingdom authority and say, God, in the name of Jesus, I speak that they will uh, bring about your kingdom principle, your kingdom ethics, your kingdom morals, your kingdom values, your kingdom lifestyles. Break everything that is, uh, you know, not of your kingdom, not of your word, and let your truth be replaced in their minds. Yes, and God will do that. We are going to study about kingdom government, and we'll see how God changes the government. And uh, uh, why? Because Psalm 115 verse 16 says, The heaven belongs to the Lord, the earth he's given to mankind so whatever happens on the earth is under our jurisdiction we are responsible so we need to exercise authority and speak against pornography rape suicide uh, murder uh, uh, immoral things um, you know there's so much of um, a divorce that happening speak against all of those things and now you know there's so much of idolatry you need to speak take the authority and speak declare god's word and uh, you know god will move god will um, do what we speak and ask because he has given us this authority and we are asking according to his will uh, 1 john chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 says that you know this is a confidence that we have uh, as we approach god that Anything we ask according to his will, he hears us. And we know that we have what we have asked because we have asked of him. So anything you ask according to his will, whatever you're binding, what you are releasing, he has given us this authority. And we are saying, God, your kingdom come here on earth. Just speak, just declare, just believe by faith and God will do it for us. You know, we have all of heaven backing us and the king of heaven backing us up. Yes. We are not controlling others now. Sorry? So we are not controlling others. Means if we are praying for other people. Ah, oh, when we are praying, we are praying according to God's will, what is right, what is affecting us, what is not right in God's kingdom and should not be here on this earth. What are the values, the principles, the laws they are bringing, which is not according to God's kingdom, that we are binding. But we can't go and tell them, uh, you know, can't control their lives. You know, uh, can't tell them, hey, you're supposed to eat this. You're supposed to dress like this. <laughs> you know, you're supposed not to have so many wives. Okay. Anyway. Sister, uh, I have a testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, this happened uh, yesterday. My daughter, she is, uh, you know, she was trying to invest in buying a property. And uh, she had issued a check of a big amount without... Uh, I mean, her loan was not sanctioned. And this uh, property was not a genuine property. It was an old building and renovated flat, which they were trying to sell it as new property. And uh, she um, didn't know that time. She believed these people and they said, we will not use a check. We'll just write the non-bankable and we will not use your check and keep it. 
and uh, when she went online and checked and found out that it's a old property and they were trying to uh, cheat her and you know it was eight year old building and all that she was very upset and she called me and all that. and then i started praying and uh, i said don't go for this property tell them you're not interested and then they said we will not return your check but she had no money and she had told them then uh, I called them up and I spoke. I said, we want this check back and she's not interested because you have not been honest in your deal. So I just started praying and I started praying and I said with the authority that God has given me, these people are fraud and they cannot cheat us. And I pray that this man who has taken the check himself will bring and give the check to my daughter. And uh, I prayed and as I was praying, he started replying to me on WhatsApp. And he said that I will bring this check and give it to your daughter in the evening. And yesterday he brought and gave the check to my daughter. This I want to give testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. Yeah. So yes, uh, uh, we can exercise kingdom authority like this, a good testimony, a good example. And um, how do we exercise our authority? The words that we use, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power, okay? So we need to speak words of authority, need to issue those decrees and come out in, that come out in the name of Jesus. You say, I declare and decree in the name of Jesus that my children will rise up they will love the Lord, they will seek the Lord. Whatever you're looking in your marriage, in your family, your finances, your job, just declare and decree God's word. Okay, so Jesus said, in my name, you will cast out devils, yeah, devils, sorry, in my name, by the authority of my name, you will heal the sick. Okay, so you will raise the dead, you will um, uh, cast out demons. So as a believer, we have the authority to use the name of Jesus. So when you use the name of Jesus, understand that the name of Jesus is not some ma magical charm, right? Like, uh, you know, when you are, uh, when, you know, people are afraid, of, Jesus, 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 it's not like a charm that you use that you say the name of Jesus hundred times, something will happen. No, that's not why we use the name of Jesus. But when we're using the name of Jesus, we're basically expressing the fact that we have been delegated by him, we have been authorized by him on his behalf to do what he would do if he was here, right? So we are representatives of him, we are just representing him. For example, if the chief minister, you know, sends his personal assistant uh, on an assignment and says, go and tell these people, wherever you have to do this assignment, you know, that I told you to do this, this and this. So the assist, assistant goes and he says, hey, we are supposed to do this. This is how we are supposed to do it. This is how the chief minister has asked me to do it. And he has sent me with this uh, assignment. And this is what he has asked me to do. So he's using the name of the person in authority. And what is done? The job is done. No questions asked. Right? So you know that even in in our uh, uh, you know in our setup, you know, if somebody tells you to do something, say why should I do it? And then Pastor Ashish has told us all to do this. No questions asked. We just do it. Okay. So the King of Glory has sent you and me with His authority, with His name, and He has given us this authority. And um, when we speak in his authority, when, uh, when we use his name, even the demonic realm or the demonic powers, you know, shiver and shudder because they know the name of Jesus and they know the authority that it carries, okay? So we've been authorized by King Jesus to get the work done on earth. We have to do it. So coming back to Komal's um, question, okay? Jesus has given you the authority, so you're using that authority to get the work done in his name because he wants his kingdom here on earth to be a representative of the king or represent the kingdom of heaven, okay? So Jesus is standing by you, okay? He is uh, he's giving you the power and the strength and he's going out and doing what you are asking. He's, you are asking in his name. Remember when Jesus was standing beside the bed of uh, uh, Peter's mother-in-law, she was sick with fever. And what did Jesus do? 
Peter's mother-in-law, when she was sick, what did Jesus do? Huh? He rebuked the fever, yes. And what did the, the fever, what happened to the fever? The fever left. He did not pray, Father, this lady suffering with fever, please, if it's your will, please heal. He did not say that. He knew it is the Father's will to heal. And he just went and spoke and rebuked the fever and the fever left her. So when we exercise authority, uh, you know, um, when, we sp uh, when we speak to the conditions in our body, speak to that sickness, speak to that disease in Jesus' name, you know, we, need, we see the fruit. We see the results. The sickness has to bow its knees before the name of Jesus. Amen? Okay. Matthew chapter 6 verse 16 says that Jesus cast out uh, the spirits with his word. Okay, so when you speak to those demonic works, you speak to the demonic spirits in Jesus' name. You know, that's our authority. That's how we use it. And, uh, you know, the demons have to flee. Okay, even when Jesus spoke to the winds and waves, he spoke his, the word to the winds and the waves. Right? So you and I uh, use our authority to speak to our circumstances, our situations, things that are happening in our workplace, in our family, speak and issue decrees, okay, of authority in Jesus' name. And if you don't do that, it means that we are accepting whatever is there. We're accepting that this is how life should be, okay? It's not how life should be. B. We use our authority and we speak against it. Another way we exercise authority is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So uh, Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says, The anointing breaks the yokes and removes burdens. Okay. So the anointing that is upon us empowers us to overthrow the works of darkness. Okay. It's the anointing that breaks yokes and removes burdens. So that is why you and I need to pray and ask God for more of his anointing of his spirit in our lives. Okay. So uh, each one of us can wish we can be a, you know, a live uh, wire or we can be that little wire that conducts one point amps of electricity or power, or you want to be a high tension wire that conducts kilowatts of power. Okay, so choice that you make. Okay, the, the source that you have, the power source is unlimited, right? But you need to choose, hey, I want to be this little wire with just little power. That's enough for me. Or you want to be somebody who's saying, no, I want to be that high tension wire that conducts that kilowatts of power. Okay, so what kind of conductor do you want your spirit man to be? Okay. The Bible says that we are strengthened with power in our spirit, in our inner man. So when we um, pursue for more of God's anointing, more of the Holy Spirit anointing, you know, uh, we want more of his anointing, then we can see God move powerfully in our midst because we are desiring that, we are seeking that. There's nothing wrong in desiring more of anointing, more of power to bring his kingdom here on earth and in our land and in our sphere, in our uh, society, okay? So you can say that, hey, you know, nowadays we don't see many diseases or cancer being healed like in the early church. So let's pray and ask God for greater anointing, to be that high tension, you know, wire that carries kilowatts of power that when you speak when you minister to people when you pray for those who are sick you know you will see cancers healed and you know people healed and restored to wholeness and strength okay so you can be saying you can say that hey nowadays we don't see the lame walk but let's pray and say god give me such an anointing that when i pray for people who are lame like in the book of acts in the early church you know that lame man went about leaping and jumping in the temple god i want to see that same thing in my life in my ministry even as i go about just serving you and ministering in your name i might not be a pastor i might not be a prophet apostle teacher whatever but say god i'm just this small person but i want that you know 100 or that high voltage kilowatt of power of anointing so that i can do great things for you okay so 
The question is, are we willing to pursue that kind of anointing? Okay? And say, God, we want it. Or are we going to just be happy with what we have, just adjust with that little bit and say, anyway, I'm going to heaven. It's good. I'm happy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have received Jesus Christ. And when, uh, when, uh, this, when Jesus comes, I'll be raptured and then I'll be in heaven. Praise God. Okay? So, yes, it's good to have that kind of assurance. But also, when we go to heaven, there is no devils to cast out. Right? There is no sickness to heal. There is no lame person there to be prayed. So there's no way you can use your authority. All the authority that you can use is use it here. Right? Right? When you're given a position and power, you use that authority. Right? Hey, I'm authority here. I have to make sure everything is going well, going proper. I've been given this you know, responsibility. I want to do my best. So also we've been given God's authority. So let's pursue that. Let's press in. Say, God, I want more of your anointing. And um, uh, say, Holy Spirit, we want to see more of the things that happen in the early church. Jesus' time. We want to take Jesus as his word, what he says. You know, I can do greater things than what he has done. I want that to become a reality, a truth in my kingdom. So I'm pressing in for more of your anointing okay the third way we can bring the kingdom of god into our circumstances is to pray okay jesus said pray thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so we need to pray the kingdom of god into our situation we need to pray the kingdom of god into our problem and we pray that the kingdom of god come okay so that is what we need to do we need to think kingdom authority we need to think kingdom dominion and when we can do that, you know, um, uh, uh, God can do greater things in and through us. Why should we ki think kingdom authority? Why should we think kingdom dominion? Is because God has gone through extreme lengths just to place that authority in our lives. How did we receive this authority? It's not just easy. God didn't just give it to us like that. Jesus died on the cross for our since right he took back the authority from satan he'd given that authority to adam and eve adam and eve gave that authority to satan and jesus took it by giving his very life imagine god giving his only son jesus going through all that pain taking on the sins of the whole mankind being uh, you know being um, um, uh, uh, you know deserted by the father when he was on the uh, on the cross, he went through all of that just so that you and I can have this authority. So this authority that has been given to us is not like, oh, the God is king. He has authority. He's given it to me. Okay. No, it is a great big price that has been placed so that this authority can be placed in our lives. And so God will also hold us accountable to the authority that he has given you and me. God was not just going to go hold us authority for how we are living our lives, what we are doing with the time, the resources, the skills, the talents, how good stewards, but also with the authority that he has given to us. Amen. Any questions in chapter 8? Difference between decree and declare. Sorry? Difference between decree and declare. Decree. De decreeing is when you are decreeing something that is already, uh, and declaring is, is the same. It's just, you're, you're just saying already what is there. Yes. Decla decreeing is your, uh, your speaking, and declaring is your, you know, uh, you're believing by faith that it's already done, it's already you know, come to pass. Yes, you're declaring by faith that it's already done thing. Yeah. How do we pray for our children when we feel so directionless in their paths? So what you need to do and pray is just take out scripture verses that talk about, um, 
uh, you know, your children being prosperous, children growing in the things of God, you know, walking worthy of God, uh, you know, uh, bearing fruit in everything, that the work of their hands is blessed. There's so many scripture passages. What you need to do is just declare and decree that over their um, lives. Speak it over their lives. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on to chapter 9? No questions? I hope you are uh, charged up to use your kingdom authority. I hope I've challenged you enough to use your kingdom authority. No responses. Sister, I have a question. Uh, Jesus controlled the weather. He spoke to the weather. He stopped the storm. But uh, nowadays there are so many hurricanes and cyclones. And uh, uh, you mean to say the uh, preachers or they are not praying for it, sister, and it is stopping? Um, see, that's what I said. We have realms of authority that we can exercise our authority over. Right. Yeah. Um, when I'm talking about storms, I'm mentioning about storms in our life. But yes, we can uh, also, you know, uh, speak against um, uh, natural disasters that will come uh, in our land. We can ask and pray God to forgive if my people who have called by my name would repent from their sins and, you know, um, uh, uh, seek my face and God says, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. So, you know, our land is being, uh, 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 earth is being devastated by so many things uh, that are happening. The ecosystem that is, you know, just going um, haywire because of, you know, pollution and all of the other things. So we can, we need to pray and ask God for forgiveness that we've not been good stewards of taking care of what he has entrusted us, uh, nature itself. And uh, you can just pray and ask God to divert that, uh, um, you know, the storm or the hurricane or whatever. So when the warnings are given, what people do is, you know, they give the warnings and, you know, people are moved to safety and this and that. But, you know, people don't I don't know how many uh, uh, churches and people get on their knees and pray and say, God, you know, divert this or stop this or weaken this hurricane or, you know, this um, the storm that is coming. That is what we need to do. Yes. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Biju's question is, how do we pray against um, uh, witchcraft? Um, yeah, so, you know, you declare, um, uh, you know, uh, when you're praying against witchcraft, you are basically asking God's protection, deliverance, his authority over every form of evil or a spiritual oppression that you are facing. So declare God's authority and power over all things. You know, you can just pray and acknowledge that God is the creator of heaven and earth, that, you know, um, declare his word that, you know, uh, no evil that is... Uh, coming that's formed against you will prosper or stand that you know you declare that every form of power and dominion the form of witchcraft or evil uh, will not stand in the authority of Jesus's name also you know just protect and ask for cleansing and uh, the covering of the blood of the lamb uh, from against every form of witchcraft just renounce and break every curse that is there um, you know uh, say that no, uh, Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17 says, no weapon formed against me will prosper or stand. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn and break every chain of darkness, cancel it in the power of Jesus' name and just pray for uh, deliverance and uh, protection. Also, you can use... Um, uh, you know, you can ask God to deliver you from the evil one, set you free from every bondage or influence of the um, enemy. Uh, just put your head, uh, ask God to put your head of fire around, of protection around your family, your home. And just thank God that, you know, um, uh, no form of evil will befall your tent because God is your refuge, your fortress. Psalm 91 uh, verses, uh, I think, 11 and 12 also. Then, um, you know, just declare victory after that. So 
you know, some of the uh, scripture passages that you can discern is, you know, Ephesians chapter 6, putting on the armor of God. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper or stand. You know, um, um, that the weapons that God has given you, uh, his name, uh, the authority in his name, declare the word of God is not carnal uh, for your warfare, but mighty in God. Psalm 91, you know, God's protection over his people. Uh, and then that you have, uh, a, God has given you authority over every power of the enemy. Uh, so you can speak that and exercise your power and just uh, declare uh, God's word over your life and over your family. Did that help? Okay. Okay, we'll move on to any more questions. Okay, if there are no more questions, we can move on to chapter 9. Okay, chapter 9 is talking about kingdom. Yeah, kingdom government. Okay. Okay, now God is king of his kingdom. He rules, he exercises his authority through his government. Okay, so because he's a king, he has a kingdom, he exercises his rule, his authority uh, through his government. Uh, look at what Psalms chapter 22 verses 20, verse 28 says. Can somebody read that please? Psalms chapter 22 verse 28. So on top of page number 95. For the kingdom is the Lord's. And he rules over the nations. The kingdom is the Lord and he rules over the nations. So God rules over the nations. Even in our world today, he's ruling over the nations. Can somebody please read Psalm 103 verse 19, please? The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Amen. His kingdom uh, in our present fallen world rules over everything. That is what Psalm 103 verse 19 says. Even though we're living in a fallen world, but his kingdom, you know, rules over everything. So uh, we are to recognize God's rule, his reign, his authority coming into our world today. So wherever each one of us are, whatever place you have in life, you need to recognize or know that his rule is coming in and through your life. Okay. His rule is coming through you in and through your life to reach out to your community and to the world. Okay. And we also need to understand that God has placed authority structures around us. Okay. So God's government, his rule, his reign, you know, comes on the earth through God's government and it comes through the authority structures that he has placed in this world. So what are some of the authority structures that God has placed in the world? What are some of the authority structures that God has placed in the world? Family, the local church, the body of Christ, okay, our workplaces, wherever we are working, and also the civil government, okay? So God has placed these authority structures, and through this authority structures, he is bringing his kingdom rule and his reign. So what are the authority structures that God has placed in our world? Family, the local church, the body of Christ, our workplace, and the civil government, okay? So God has placed his authority structures in all these areas. We must learn to see the kingdom of God, God's rule coming through these authority structures that you and I are part of. So don't look at these authority structures or things that we must break free from, sorry, that we must break free out of or we must rebel against or tear it down. No. Those are wrong postures to have, but we must learn to relate correctly to them because God intends that through these authority structures that he has placed, that he can bring about his kingdom, rule, reign, his governance, and also his kingdom, authority, and power. Okay, so uh, how do we see God's authority structured lived out for 
mankind. Uh, look at what 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, 11 and 12 tells us. Okay, we'll come back after the break and uh, we will look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, 11 and 12. Thank you.